let's get started. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to our SAP community call today. We're live here on YouTube, very first time for me and the SAP Activate team. We're here today with uh, my key enabler for the SAP Activate team here in the SAP community, Nishat, and her three speakers that are going to present the roadmaps for SAP Activate to you today. Um, just so my name is Lena, I'm from the SAP community team, and I'm kind of just the technical host for the session today. Nisha is going to be the moderator and host. Um, question wise, you guys can submit your questions here in the chat in YouTube. Um, and we have some dedicated time towards the end of the call to address your questions. And with that being said, I'm super, super excited to have you guys here. And I'll hand over to you, Nisha, to get it started. Thank you, Lena. And uh, we're super excited to be here. As Lena mentioned, my name is Nishat Fatima. I am the SAP Activate Community Lead. And uh, today we're going to talk about navigating through roadmaps and the outlook for 2022. And as Lena mentioned, I have three speakers with me. We have uh, Dan, Addy, and Jan, who will then introduce themselves as we uh, move forward with the presentation. And as Lena mentioned, feel free to ask questions in the chat. We'll be monitoring it and answer as and when uh, either via chat or towards the end of the presentation. So um, our agenda for today, I'll share some slides. So thank you for being here. And uh, we'll go through a demo of uh, SAP Activate roadmaps and what you can uh, see and then what SAP Activate actually covers. And then Jan will take us through an outlook for 2022. And then we'll end uh, with an open Q&A where you'll get an opportunity to ask questions in the chat. And then I'll ask our speakers those questions. So uh, excited to be here. And without further ado, handing it over to Dan. Thank you, Nishat. I am Dan Seco, a senior product manager for SAP Activate, living in Chicago, Illinois. I've been with SAP for almost 25 years, and I've spent most of my career as a consultant implementing various SAP products. For the last eight years, I've been working on improving implementation efficiency, especially for cloud products. And within the SAP Activate team, I am the owner of the SAP S4HANA Cloud Implementation Roadmap and the Intelligent Enterprise Implementation Roadmap. My task today is to show you how to navigate through the Roadmap Viewer. I will start with a scenario where Paul, the project manager, is getting ready to start an SAP S4HANA Cloud project. He is very familiar with running the projects, but he wants to know more specifics about the project management in SAP Activate. He knows that he needs to access what we call the roadmap viewer, but of course, he can't remember where the link is located. Fortunately, he remembers that it's easy to find via Google or Bing. And this is where now I'm going to start my demo. So I'm going to share my screen. Bear with me for one moment. All right. So Paul, the project manager, is at Google and he is going to Google activate roadmap. And number one hit, there's the roadmap viewer go, so, uh, SAP go to support. I will click on that. Uh, Paul will click on that and it'll take him to the roadmap viewer. Okay, so this is the header page of the roadmap viewer. And as you can see, we have a, a nice guided path across the top. So Paul first follows that path and he reads a little bit about what roadmap viewer has to offer. Number two is how to use the roadmap viewer, very important. And there's a video in here, which you can watch and you'll recognize the voice as I did the dubbing for that. And then third is learning more about uh, the, the roadmap viewer and related topics. There's several links in here. And then finally, we have some more information about SCP Cloud ALM. You may say, well, why? What does Cloud ALM have to do with this? Well, our content 
the great content that is available in the roadmap viewer is also available in Cloud ALM and it also and it provides additional functionality um, for managing projects. And then finally, exploring all the roadmaps is what Paul cl clicks on and then uh, he can see the roadmaps that are available. Addy will talk about this in a minute. For us, we're going to go right to the SAP S4 HANA Cloud Roadmap. Okay, so Paul gets here. He might read some of this description above, but he definitely goes right for the project manager eye candy right here, which is a graphical overview of what is in the roadmap. As you can see, we have the phases across the top and then what we call the work streams across down the side, and then all of the uh, major activities that take place inside that graphic. There's additional information. Paul can scroll through and read up on the different phases. As Paul's a clicker, he right away goes into the content. So since Paul did go through some of the training, he knows that on the left side, we have our filters. On the right side is our content. And as he scrolls up and down, he sees there's a lot of content there. Um, before I move back to the filters, I'm just going to point out is that we do have help documentation on the right side that explains what everything is. Um, getting back here as Paul's looking at the, the content and he remembers, oh, we have work streams which can help filter it down and there's a project management work stream. So now the roadmap has been reduced to a smaller overall plan. Uh, so he selects uh, the, the first one he sees here, actually there's above here, this discovers pre-sales, but for an implementation, we start at prepare and he sees getting started. That, we, that level we call a deliverable level. It gives a little bit of information about the tasks that are underneath it. Paul jumps into the roadmap viewer document, overview documentation, and he sees that there's a clear purpose, and that's to become familiar with the cloud solution, SAP Activate, and then we have a numbered uh, procedure, uh, procedure below it, a uh, step-by-step guidance. So if we look at the format of the first one, it's review a few um, highlighted documents. These are what we call accelerators, uh, SAP onboarding presentation, multi-cloud role. These accelerators are actually at the bottom, the active links are at the bottom of the page. So you can see the multi-country rollout and the onboarding presentation. So these are actually presentations uh, that are, can be accessed and provide more detail to that step. For our procedures, a lot of times we'll have what we call procedure notes, which is general information related to one or more of the steps in the procedure, or it may be just additional information that um, is not necessary, but we feel it's good information. So Paul then, by clicking on the content, can go back out and, and see the overview here, and he can continue his journey through the the deliverables and tasks. So meanwhile, at the, there is Stan, the system administration, administrator, who is going through a similar journey as Paul. But Stan is looking at something a little bit different. He wants to know what he needs to do as a system administrator. And instead of selecting project management, he found that he can select technical architecture and infrastructure, and this will pull up similar information but now for his role. And he can see getting started has some a little bit different information in it, but again, uh, he can drill down into what he needs to see. Now, he, uh, he has been in here a few times and he knows that there are certain accelerators associated with each of these tasks, but he is looking for a particular one. So he actually goes to the accelerator page. And this page will show a summary of all accelerators related to that filter. Uh, without all of the um, tasks. So it's one, uh, one central location to find it. Now he's looking for a setup guide. The standard uh, browser functionality, control F, will allow him to search on setup. So he can see it and he can see all of the occurrences. Uh, in addition, I wanna point out is that we have a where used here. We select that button, we get some more buttons here, and we can see in particular where certain uh, tasks are used. By selecting that, we can navigate directly to them. 
Uh, that arrow will take me back to where I was. We have show feedback. So if there's any feedback that you have for any of the particular items, feedback could be left right um, from this page on that accelerator. So, so once again, I'm gonna go back to the content. So we now have, a, a, we have in parallel, a third group of users. So we have, um, we have some business experts that are, have heard a lot about the fit to standard workshop and they are trying to understand more about the fit to standard. So they are able to access the roadmap viewer, but their path is slightly different where they're gonna leverage the search functionality. And if they go in and they type into the search fit to standard, uh -huh. it will then, the system will do a search on fit to standard and it will bring up uh, our deliverable levels, tasks, and accelerators associated. So the way this is read is we have um, a particular entity here. It's a deliverable. You can read a little bit about it. You can see we have a task. And then if I go down further, we can see that um, several different documents are also brought up. And by selecting these, it will take us in this particular case right to that deliverable level. So uh, we can learn more about the fit to standard. So uh, that concludes my general overview of the roadmap view. Please explore on your own. There's a wealth of information available in the tool. Now I will hand over to Addy. We'll discuss the different roadmaps available. Thank you, Dan. All right, good morning, good afternoon, um, good evening, depending on which time zone you're in. Uh, my name is Admet Kamugisha, and I'm based in uh, Newtown Square. Um, uh, today, I am going to show you a little bit about the overview of the different roadmap we cover. But before I do so, um, let me tell you a little bit about, about myself. I've been with ACP for about eight years now. Um, I started with services, but now I moved on to the ACP Activate team. And as a part of the Activate team, um, I am responsible on building roadmaps, and I own the SAP Activate methodology for RISE with SAP S4 HANA Cloud Private Edition Roadmap. So today I'm gonna to give you a little tour of what our roadmap cover, um, what the different portfolio that we offer, uh, whether it's cloud or on-prem, but with a bit more focus on, on, on um, S4 HANA Cloud. Um, so I'm gonna to go to the Explore Roadmap. So Dan had showed you um, a little bit of the overview of the SAP S4 HANA Cloud Roadmap. But we have way more um, roadmap than you think. So in the Explore Roadmap, uh, in the Activate Roadmap Viewer, um, you will see a range of um, various roadmaps. So if I start on the right-hand side, um, you will see a general methodology uh, roadmap where you can find a general instruction on implementation of a cloud um, or even um, on-prem, on-premise agile or using a waterfall methodology. We do also cover um, upgrade methodology. Let's say you're going from one S4HANA version to the next S4HANA version. Uh, you will find the upgrade roadmap under the upgrade methodology. Um, one example is, for example, the SAP S4HANA upgrade and product integration. Let's say you bought S4HANA 1610 version. If you wonder how you're going to go from 1610 to 2020 as for HANA, then that is the um, roadmap that will help you understand how to go from one version to another. We also do cover the on-premise um, specific implementation methodology um, with uh, three various roadmap, one for S4 HANA on-prem, BW for HANA, but we also do cover a central finance one. And um, let me focus a little bit more on the cloud specific methodology. So as you know, SAP has a um, wide range of um, different product um, that we offer, um, especially in the cloud area. Dan just covered the SAP Activate methodology for SAP S4 HANA Cloud to help you with the journey of the implementing to S4 HANA Cloud. But we also do cover the Rise with SAP S4 HANA Cloud Private Edition that was released um, last year. Uh, around February 27th. Um, and then we also now do have the three system landscape SAP S4 HANA Cloud, but we also do have um, various cloud LOB such as Success Factor, uh, Service Cloud Roadmap, Data Warehouse Cloud, um, Intelligent Spend Management Roadmap, 
uh, analytic clouds, et cetera. I'm not gonna go into each roadmap. I hope that you can take time to review um, each roadmap depending on which project you're trying to approach. So going, um, using the example that Dan just showed, um, in the SAP s cloud, you did see the various tasks, deliverables um, that you see in one roadmap. It's going to be the same for um, the other roadmaps that we've covered. So in this instance, if I go in the Rise with SAP s cloud private edition, you will see the same overview. Um, maybe the, the content might be different because it's a different solution. But the structure that we use in Activate Implementation Methodology is going to remain the same. You will find a similarity in phases, similarity in the SAP Activate work stream, but also similarity in some tasks and deliverables, but of course with a higher and bigger target to um, the respective tasks, depending on which solution you're trying to implement. And same, all the roadmap that you're going to find will have um, different accelerators targeting the specific solution. Um, so that's for the rise with SAP s Cloud, but like I mentioned, we have and do cover different roadmaps. And one thing that I do want to mention is that um, those roadmaps are constantly um, upgraded or updated, if I can say, as we follow an agile methodology. Um, every two weeks, we do have a, um, a new roadmap updated. Um, if I take the example SAP s Cloud, um, and you see the last day it was published on the right-hand side, you can see that the latest version was on January 26. And it will be true for most of the Cloud LOB roadmap. And before I end my presentation, um, one of the things that you have to take into consideration as you navigate through the roadmap is you can um, save them as your favorite. When you save roadmap as your favorite, uh, next time you navigate to the roadmap viewer, those um, roadmap that you save as favorite will be displayed under your favorite roadmap. Um, don't forget to follow us um, on the SAP community um, site. Uh, but I'll, before I finish, I want to hand it over to Jan Mosel, who will give you a little bit about the outlook of 2022. Um, thank you for paying attention. Jan, over to you. Thank you, Eddie. And thank you, Dan, for covering these topics uh, for us. Before I talk about uh, the outlook for 2022. Uh, I know we are we kind of passed into February, uh, but still Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, we are starting New Year. Um, I wanted to provide a little bit of a little bit of, a, of, an, of an update. Um, my name is Jan Musel. I have been with SAP uh, for a long time. Um, I've started in 96 in a small unit in Czech Republic, which in the meantime became a sizable unit. Um, and in the meantime, through various roles, um, I'm now leading the team that's building SAP Activate, uh, the team that's uh, pulling together all the expertise and uh, experience that our team can share with you and with um, all the you know, customers and partners. Uh, what I wanted to um, share, and Nisha, maybe you can, you can help me sharing. Uh, I have some technical difficulties, share the slide. But I wanted to provide you with, with an update on uh, the outlook for 2022 in two categories. One category is the, um, is the community itself. So we are, uh, we are planning to um, continue building and growing the community uh, that we started putting together last year. Uh, last year, as uh, some of you know, uh, we, have, we have moved from uh, proprietary uh, platform into an open platform on sap.com. Uh, we have opened up the community to larger number of uh, uh, followers, people that can share their experience. They can ask questions and engage with our team directly. Uh, so we have done that um, in about May of, of last year. And I want to thank everybody who um, embraced us in the uh, in the community, engaged with us, and uh, we continue to do that throughout 2022. Um, we had tremendous uh, uptake on the uh, blogging, sharing experiences. Uh, we, had, uh, we had a lot of uh, great contributions uh, from uh, the community, as well as uh, you know, SAP um, internal colleagues. 
uh, that engaged and shared their experiences. And that was, that was tremendous. That, that, that is amazing. And we want to continue doing that. Um, some of you participated in the, um, in the challenge, blogging challenge uh, that Nisha put out there in um, um, fourth quarter of last year. And we, we continue to think creatively about what, what to do and how to bring you more interesting and valuable content. So that, that's going to be a significant part of what we'll continue to do in 2022. The second part of, of the update is, is really the content, the, the, the content that we deliver in SAP Activate, in the Roadmap Viewer, in SAP Cloud ALM, in Solution Manager, if you're using Solution Manager in your, in your uh, uh, journey to, to SAP. We are focusing on continually delivering content. So one um, area that we'll, we'll continue to do, and you know, this is something that we have been doing for years now, is that we deliver content that's aligned and in step with the SAP products. Uh, so when it comes to the assets that um, Addy and Dan shared with you in their demos, we continue to build those assets and continue to enhance them. As the product is changing, um, you know, if there are changes in the way the uh, product is provisioned, um, if there are changes in uh, the capabilities for you know, moving configuration from one system to another, um, evolution of how to run uh, fit to standard, we bring all those learnings and practices into Activate and we do it at very fast pace. As Addy mentioned, we are, we are updating the content every two weeks. So we have bi-weekly updates of these specific uh, capabilities and guidance in Activate. And that may mean you know, simple update of the onboarding presentation. It may mean a significant revamp and rework in specific area like OCM. Uh, we continue to look at the content, continue to listen to the feedback from our users and we uh, continue to build up that content. So just to give you a couple of, uh, couple of uh, things that are more tangible and that we, we talked about uh, previously, um, you know, we have responded to some of the changes that were forced on us as project people, as uh, people are delivering um, um, transformation in our businesses with the change in, in working model where we had to shift very rapidly from being predominantly at our desks in the office to being at our homes and working and running these projects in, in very different formats. So we have brought up a lot of guidance in terms of uh, how to structure the projects and run them with uh, remote delivery capabilities. In similar way, we are now seeing um, a lot of, lot of um, interest in, um, um, in scaling of Agile as, uh, as more and more large organizations are up, uh, taking up uh, their transformation journey. Uh, they're looking and exploring and embracing Agile. They're looking at scaling techniques. So we are, that's one area of um, um, activities that we'll be, we'll be looking into and we'll have something to share with you in, in the future. So those are some of the, some of the you know, areas that we are looking into. So it's not only purely um, the SAP product topics, but we also look at practices and experiences uh, that we have in the, in the projects. Um, I do encourage you to check some of the latest uh, blog posts uh, from Andreas, uh, from Lauren, um, Dan um, and others that, that have posted on the, on the community, you'll find some really interesting uh, stuff that will help you to run your projects today. And that's, that's really what we are looking for, uh, sharing with you uh, going forward. So I, I guess that's, uh, you know, on a high level, that's uh, what, what we wanted to discuss. And I don't know, Nisha, if we have any questions uh, or if you want to take us into the Q&A. Yep. Thank you, Jan. Uh, thank you, Dan and Addy, for the conversation. And I do have some questions for you guys to uh, get us started. 
what uh, does the release schedule look like? I know we looked into the roadmaps, we looked into how to navigate that, but uh, what is the release schedule for Activate when it comes to the various solutions? So let me, let me tackle that. Uh, when it comes to uh, the public cloud um, uh, content for S4 HANA Cloud, uh, we are releasing on major RTCs. Uh, so this year, we just released uh, for 2202 uh, recently. That was the shipment that we did um, at the end of January. And for 2208, uh, we are planning to release on RTC as we, as we always do. Uh, when it comes to intermediate releases in between, uh, we go bi-weekly. Uh, I would need to think, I think we are in the middle of sprint right now. So we are gonna be delivering when that sprint window is over. Uh, we, don't hold, we don't hold back. When it comes to our on-premise assets, uh, we typically need a little more time uh, in the on-premise space to build up the content. And we try to stay as close to the major releases and uh, at least one of the feature packs. Uh, I don't know, Addy, if you wanna add uh, something uh, from your experience on working that area with, with Christoph. No, that's that's correct. We we stay as close as possible to the major release, especially once a year when S4 HANA go from one version to another, um, where we expect more changes. Um, we just released um, a version in November that followed the new S4 HANA 2021 version, if I'm correct. Um, so yes, that's what we do. Uh, we usually release four times a year, uh, but starting 2022, we're trying to adopt a more agile approach following the bi-weekly sprint. Uh, we'll see how it's going to work out, um, but we have learned a lot from um, doing cloud implementation and you know, releasing bi-weekly. I think it helps everyone with the constant changes that we see in our solution also to help the project teams. Um, so yes. Awesome. Thank you. And then uh, you guys mentioned upgrades, right? Is there an upgrade section in the roadmap viewer? And if so, how can we access that or navigate that? Yes, um, so we do have an upgrade. Um, during my session, I did show different section in the Activate Roadmap Viewer. Um, there was one for cloud, one for on-premise, one for general, and we do have now a specific section for upgrade. Um, so under the Upgrade Roadmap section, you will find the different roadmap that will help you with um, any you know, upgrade methodology. Um, like I just say, if you're going from one s version to another, um, you find specific tasks, deliverables, and especially accelerators to help the project team um, that's going through a, an upgrade. Awesome, thank you. And then- Can, can, can I just, can I point out just to the people that are watching live that if you have questions, can you, you can answer, uh, I guess you put those questions into the chat and we'll answer those live. So please, if you have questions, put them into the chat. Anything you want to know? <laughs> Thanks, Dan. And then uh, while we wait for the chat questions, I have a few more for you guys to keep the conversation going. Uh, can you explain the difference between uh, the three system landscape roadmap and then the three SL upgrade roadmap? Let me let me take that. So. In uh, the three system landscape, uh, there are some changes in how we handle software and content up upgrades uh, during the upgrade process. Um, in, the, um, in the three system landscape, we basically cover the events of the upgrade um, in a dedicated roadmap because we want to make it clear to everybody who is uh, running such system that there are some pre-upgrade activities that they need to get started um, about six weeks before the upgrade when information gets published uh, on the timeline and events and what's new in, in, the, in, the, in the upgrade. Then we have the three-week window uh, for the up upgrade itself, uh, which we start with uh, the test system and then simultaneously update the uh, upgrade the development and production and during those events during those steps uh, there's certain uh, uh, certain steps the customer needs to execute and we detail uh, detail them out in the methodology and then there's a post processing after the upgrade when there is some um, set of activities that customer needs to execute 
in order to adopt the new uh, SAP content that's been shipped with the new features uh, mm -hmm. in order to start using the new capabilities in the system. Um, this has been uh, somewhat of a change uh, from the um, two system landscape and we uh, needed to pull that out into a separate roadmap to make it more visible. We are also working with our cloud ALM colleagues uh, on capabilities in cloud ALM uh, that will help us uh, manage some of this and make it much more visible in terms of timelines um, in the future. So stay tuned, uh, that's, uh, that's on the roadmap. And some of the, some of the capabilities are actually already in cloud ALM where we publish uh, the information directly in the project. If you have s hana cloud in your scope, you will see the um, timeline for RTC already appearing on your dashboard for your project. Awesome, thank you. And then uh, Dan, you mentioned cloud ALM a little bit, right? Can you speak further on that and what other things are available and take us into a le little deeper dive on cloud ALM? All right, uh, uh, cloud ALM has a, a few different functions. One function that is directly related to SAP Activate is the project management piece of it. So what what they've developed is a, a tool that will bring in and it brings in the roadmaps that we have and 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 makes that available to a project manager and, and to the team members so that they can do completion task, uh, completion statuses and and monitor overall project. Um, project manager can can add tasks and and assign people to tasks. So it's a uh, an overall project management tool that sits really on top of our our content. Uh, in, in addition, uh, Cloud ALM will provide functionality for uh, monitoring integration, uh, monitoring testing, as well as uh, they've got future plans to continue to expand so that they could be a central lo uh, location for, for monitoring and executing um, projects and, and managing your cloud solutions. Awesome, thank you. And then uh, for the roadmap viewer, is there an option or a way for us to provide feedback? Yes, there is. Um, you can provide a general feedback on the actual tool, the roadmap viewer itself, or as you navigate through um, various roadmap and you're looking at a task, an accelerator, there is, a, there is a feedback functionality that Dan did show uh, earlier where um, customers, partners can um, tap in their feedback and we review those feedback and those are the feedback that we take into consideration as we build that biweekly release and biweekly uh, cycle. Yeah, if I can add to that is that feedback is extremely important to us is that we do we do review that feedback that is put into the roadmap viewer on a biweekly basis and and we try to uh, resolve if there is an issue or if there's this recommendation we try to build that into our plan uh, as we go forward a lot of times we actually will will resolve that within a week or two since we work in biweekly sprints but it is so so important to us that we hear what you what you are seeing and and saying so that we can continue to improve the product that we are putting out so please use that feedback button in the roadmap viewer thanks thank you and then uh kelsey has a follow-up question on that in the chat how is the feedback process with the Activate team when we receive it and does it get considered for content updates? Yeah, uh, I think we, we may have a little bit of a delay between us answering and, and receiving. Yeah. Uh, so the, uh, <laughs> and that, that, that's fine. Um, when, when we receive the, the feedback, as, as Dan said, it goes into our planning cycle. So if you're, you know, if you, if you're using Agile, in your organization, we, we basically take this as a input into the backlog. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if it's actionable, if it's something that we can act on relatively quickly or very quickly, uh, we act on it quickly if there is a capacity in that sprint. 
if, it, if we don't have capacity in the sprint, it still is in the backlog and is considered for future improvements. Uh, so there, there were, you know, if, if say uh, there's, a, there's um, information that needs to be corrected, we would uh, prioritize that over say uh, additional content requests that may take time to build up, right? If, uh, if I have a request for additional template that may take us uh, a cycle or two, uh, to build up and we would want to do some internal due diligence validation before we put it out uh, but if there is a you know um, a uh, improvement that we can implement quickly we do awesome thanks Jan, and thank you dan uh, another question in the chat what are your top three tips for someone implementing with sap activate to yield a successful implementation so one tip that I have is to go back to our last session uh, <laughs> and look through the first about 20 minutes. Uh, we, we, spend, we spend a little bit of time uh, talking through uh, the success uh, criteria. Um, but if, if I had to answer, you know, um, top three things, um, one, educate your business users that they need to be more involved in a project uh, than mm -hmm. you are used to from using ASAP or any other previous methodology. It, it requires very close collaboration between business and IT to be successful. Second, second um, um, I, would, I would, and that, that's probably no surprise to anybody uh, that has done SAP projects before, uh, understand your source of data and plan your data migration, data cleansing a lot sooner than you think. If, you, if you're starting now, you're probably a month late. Mm -hmm. um, it, it always is on critical path for any project. Um, and then the third one that kind of relates to the first one is the importance of organizational change management. Uh, with Activate, uh, we are changing the paradigm from basically heavily tailoring the systems to trying to stay as close to standard functionality that SAP delivers. And that requires change in the business. And for that change to be successful, you really need to pay attention to organizational change management, execute it throughout the entire project, show the business users the value of the new processes and how it's benefiting them or how it's benefiting the organization. Uh, if you underestimate this and, you know, uh, not do good enough job, the success and the adoption of your software in your organization may be lacking. I'm going to add on to that. So, so we get four, but the one I'm going to add is, is sort of all encompassing and that's to read the activate roadmap. Uh, we have all of those points in there and we're focusing on, on the different work streams and what is most important. Uh, the content is ever changing and being updated. So it's not a static roadmap. It's we want people to go to it time and time again, take a look at it, read through it, look at those overall processes that we are putting together for the different work streams so that you can implement successfully. So that's, that'll be one, my one point that I want to emphasize. Thanks for the question. Ah, you Thank just said you. that one. I wanted to say then, but uh, to ah. also add another tip, <laughs> to add another <laughs> tip, I think uh, to me, education is key. Um, in Activate Roadmap, we do have a workroom customer team enablement. It is important that you keep up to date with, you know, new software, new release, new functionality. Uh, but education is key. We do have SAP Learning Hub, where SAP does offer a lot of courses on project, also on Activate. We do have a certification where your team and your project can be certified on how to you know, use Activate, but also how to understand s Cloud or various roadmaps. So education is key. Um, I know we are uh, experts. Um, we have years of experience, but technology is moving so fast that sometimes we have to take time to sit down and read the content that people are producing and, and, and hopefully that it can help your team through an implementation. Um, yep. Thank you, Eddie. And so you asked for three, awesome. we, gave, we gave you five. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank the beauty of having multiple people as you just give <laughs> each person gives three. Yep. Thank you guys. And that's a good point. And I'm going to give a community shout out here to Addy mentioned, keep up with the education and the certification. There are various blogs on 
hey, like how to get certified in SAP Activate if you go to our community. There are blogs on the different topics. And then uh, Dan has uh, release notes updated constantly on our community as well. So you have all of that in the community. And if you're subscribed to it, if you follow us, if you keep uh, updated, and then the Q&A functionality is also great on the community where you can ask a question and one of us or our other teammates uh, will answer your questions uh, directly there. And, and then uh, something quick, thanks to Mark. I'm looking at the chat. Thanks to yeah. Mark for following and looking at the live section. He actually just tried the QR code that you have somewhere here on my right hand side or left hand side. Um, so if you are following, if you're looking at it, you can scan it and it will take you to the community um, page for SAP Activate. Thank you. Yeah. And make right. sure when you get there to hit the follow button and follow us on the community. Thanks guys. And then uh, I have a follow-up question on the education piece, right? We are a global company. We do have a global audience. So do we offer different languages and so we can adapt? Or if somebody who is not a native English speaker, do they have the option? So let, let me tackle that uh, on, on the education side. Of course, these courses are offered globally. Uh, so all our colleagues in, um, you know, education centers are offering them um, um, in local delivery. Um, I, I've uh, had exchange with our team in education, and they have shifted all these courses into remote delivery now, including the ACT 200 course, uh, which is which is tremendous effort because that was that was designed as purely in room face-to-face -face around one desk, uh, definitely not with uh, the social distancing in mind. Um, so that shifted, uh, that shifted uh, our delivery of, uh, of the trainings. When it comes to trainings uh, or you know, e-learning uh, that you are consuming on Learning Hub, uh, they will be in, in English. I am not aware of uh, any available translations. But when it comes to the business content, we have started introducing some of the assets in different languages. Uh, so in uh, public cloud, we are also catering to our uh, customers in China and Japan uh, with, uh, with a translation. And we're looking at other, other uh, translations uh, in the future. It's, it's really a, uh, a balancing act to, to a large degree uh, because you, you need to account for the complexity of keeping the translations up to date with biweekly sprints. Uh, it really represents uh, some challenges that we need to look into and, and, and resolve. So we were able to handle it for languages that, uh, that uh, are catering to you know, uh, large markets in, in Asia. Awesome, thank you. And then is a roadmap, avail a roadmap you are available in multiple languages as well? Dan, Addy, do you want to jump in? Yeah, I could take that. So the Roma viewer is available in English, uh, Japanese, and in Chinese. And if if you go to the Roma viewer under your profile, you can change the languages there. They I'll also I'll add. So we update every two weeks in English, but uh, quarterly in the other languages. Uh, there's a comment from Mark in the chat about the certification handling experience has been sub subpar, unfortunately. Do we have a comment on that or how we can improve that? So maybe Mark, let, let us know what specifically was, was subpar um, in terms of certification. Uh, the, the certification exam for Activate is part of uh, the Learning Hub, uh, so there is a there is a subscription for um, certification, and you know one of the one of the X number I, I don't know what that X is I, I think it's six or four um, you can use on uh, the certification for Activate. Uh, when it comes to the um, enablement and training journey, uh, let me let me do a quick search and drop it into the into the chat. Um, and we have uh, we you know uh, we have number of blog posts that uh, people shared about their journey uh, to certification uh, of Activate. 
and there there has been there has been a number of resources that they they have been using uh, to prep for the certification exam. Um, uh, they there are other resources outside of SAP provided resources. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the SAP Activate book that uh, this team <laughs> published. Uh, that uh, you know you, you're you're looking at the, um, the authors and, and contributors to the to the book. Um, we of course don't have the entire team here. Uh, I want to I want to say that there was there was a lot more people in there. Um, and then uh, there is a SAP Press uh, dedicated book on SAP Activate certification. I would need to look it up because um, that that was done with um, um, SAP Press. Uh, and I don't know if if we had any participation in that book other than uh, you know giving giving the author um, uh, links to to assets that are publicly available. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I just want to add uh, we did put a link in the chat with the prepping for SAP Accurate Certification. Perfect. That's already in there, and then we also put in a, a the link for the education content. So that's all in the chat already. And then uh, we'll have the book, book link in the chat soon. And then uh, Kelsey asked about the follow-up community calls. So I do wanna say that this call that we are on currently is a follow-up from the last call we had in October where uh, we heard you guys and you wanted to know more about the Roadmap Viewer. You wanted to learn more about how to navigate that and then learn from us about what to look forward to in 2022. That's how this call was scheduled. So we do listen to you. And if you have topic ideas or if you want to hear something from us, please let us know either in the chat here or in our community. And we do take a look at it. And that's how... Uh, topic ideas for these calls are scheduled. And then for now, we're going to do quarterly calls and we'll have uh, different speakers in each call, depending on the topic and the expertise. So we will continue this uh, this year, at least. <laughs> and that's the plan for now. Do you guys want to add anything to that on the community calls? I think it's it's great. Uh, we, we we are really looking forward to hearing from the community on what is uh, your your interest. As you as you can see, you know, last time it was me and Nisha. We're expanding the group. We're we're gonna bring different speakers, so you can you can you know meet the team that's building Activate. Uh, you can also engage with them directly uh, in this format, um, or, you know, reach on, uh, reach to them on the, on the community. Everybody on, on, uh, the SAP activate team is community member and everybody has a blog post in there. So you, you should have no problems finding who those folks are that are building activate. Um, you will also figure out fairly quickly, uh, who is doing what in activate, uh, based on the topics that they cover in their blog posts. And uh, as Nisha said, uh, let us know the you know, topics of interest. Uh, I know a lot of you are going through you know, planning transformation to S4, um, going through transformation of your business uh, in your industry. Um, you, know, you, may have, you may have specific um, questions uh, and we can help tackle them at least from the Activate standpoint. I know, they're, they're, you know your questions may be wide ranging and going into product capabilities. We would not be covering those in here, but when it comes to like how to structure projects, how to run them, what are the assets that are available? Uh, what are we seeing in the industry? Happy to share all that with this community. Uh, we are here for you and uh, we're looking forward to your topics and questions. Thanks, Jan. And then uh, Kelsey is asking, are there demos within the roadmap viewer? which I can consume to enable myself to learn the tool better. Yes, as I showed in the, in the overview screen, there's a section that is uh, learn on the road, learn SAP activate roadmap viewer. And in there, there is a, a video that actually has my voice. So you get to hear my voice a little more. Um, uh, that shows all the functionalities within there. There's also a presentation on uh, that's linked from the some of the uh, uh, content pages 
that will uh, show some of the functionality via the PowerPoint. Awesome, thank you. And then I, and I know- I just where... dropped the link. Uh, I just dropped the link into the chat if, if you guys wanna grab it. Uh, um, that will take you directly to that video that Dan mentioned. Awesome, thank you, Jan. And then I know we only have a couple of minutes left. I kind of want to wrap up our call with uh, asking each one of you, Jan, Addy, Dan, what if I were to ask you how to describe SAP Activate in your own words, how would you describe it? Ooh, who's going first? <laughs> yeah. Daddy, agile. come on. Agile. <laughs> I would say agile. <laughs> I think we, we're huge in Agile. Um, we follow a bi-weekly sprint. Like I say, we keep changing. We try to stay as consistent as the market is changing. Um, so Agile will be my word. Dan, Jan? Well, I'll let Jan finish up, but I, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna just say- Dan, Dan is gonna think about it a little more. Uh, no, so no, I have word. it. I don't have one <laughs> word. So what, what I, you know, my big thing with the Activate Roadmap is it provides the right information at the point in time in the project that you need that information. And that's what we strive to do. So, so you get everything when you need it for the right role that you need it. So that we have a complete flow from end to end as to how to do an implementation. That's so great. It's like I, I was 150 gonna... words. I was going to go for two words, guided journey. Uh, that would be my two words. I, I know I'm deviating from one word rule, uh, but what, what Dan said is, is true. Uh, we, we are not trying to give you only like headlines. So uh, like, you know, you need to do a schedule. Okay. I'm the, you know, this is the first time I'm doing schedule. How do I do it? SAP, tell me how to do it. So we give you why give you the how and give you the accelerators. That's a guided journey to me. And that's what we are trying to do for every user in that project. Not only for a project manager, not only for application consultants, we look at the entire body of uh, experts that are delivering those projects and catering to all of them. Awesome, thank you. And then I do wanna end our call with uh, kind of show you how you can look at the SAP Activate community, how you can follow us. Um, can you guys see my screen real quick? Yes, yes. And it's on the community page. So if you go to our community uh, slash activate, it takes you to our page. Please hit this follow button. That's how you can keep up to date with our content. And usually the carousel here will have the most up-to-date uh, event or anything that we think is important to share with you. That's, uh, this is where it will show. But then again, in the featured content section, you'll also see some of the blog posts that uh, we highlight and you can easily click on there and go to the blog post. So I did one on the community call. So if I click that, you'll see more information on the call and what that entails and kind of, uh, and then another thing with the blog post, you'll also have the authors here. So you'll know exactly who's the expert on that topic and you'll know exactly who to reach out to or who to follow or ask a question. And that, or if you don't want to reach out to them directly, you can also leave a comment and then uh, we usually see those and then answer as and when those comments come in. Another thing, if you uh, navigate here, uh, I think the link for this is also posted in the chat. This is our subtopic page where overview documents, some of uh, success stories, learning journeys and courses that Jan and Addy and Dan have mentioned throughout the call, those are available here and uh, they do get updated. So you will have uh, this content there as well. So you have that opportunity and then uh, anything else that you want to ask a question about, there is a ask a question or if you want to share your expertise on how you have used Activate or you want to uh, share with us project insights or anything like that, you can uh, write a blog post and uh, we'll see that. So if you go into community content, you will see 
our community contributing and asking either questions or sharing blog posts on different topics. And you are e easily able to search that by our assigned tag. So any blog post you see here, if you click on that tag, it will take you to all of the SAP Activate blog posts. So you do have that opportunity as well to uh, engage with us directly. And uh, we're always here to answer those and engage with you on this uh, platform. So uh, with that, uh, Lena, do you wanna close it out for me? <laughs> Thank you so much, Nishad. Um, that was great that you actually did a demo towards the end uh, in community. Um, I just shared another link. So there is tons of links now in the chat, guys, for you to explore and to have a look uh, how to follow our tag, the SAP Activate tag um, for uh, all the blog posts that are in, all the um, questions that are in. Go and participate. Go and answer the questions that um, are your fellow community members have. And I'm looking forward to the upcoming SAP community calls with you guys. Uh, so there will be another one then in Q2. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, with that being said, thanks for that interactive um, last Q&A part here as well. I really enjoyed having multiple speakers here that interact with each other and add on yet another tip and yet another tip. And uh, I really, really enjoyed that great job. Um, and I think uh, our audience enjoyed that too. Mark, thanks for your, all your comments in the chat. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to our next calls coming up. Thanks for your time and stay healthy, all of you, and see you soon. Thank you for having see us. All soon. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.